Hey guys and welcome to the show. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow, but more importantly, welcome to this empty corner in the studio. And today, well, hopefully this isn't gonna be so empty by the end of the video. So I think if this works, it's gonna be one of my craziest LED projects to date. Now, if you haven't heard of the Ambilight TVs, they're basically a TV with a built-in backlight and they're quite expensive. They basically mimic what's on the TV and then with LEDs display it around the TV. It's a really cool effect. And if you don't have one of these TVs, you can buy kits from like Philips Hue and Govee to basically do the same thing, but they're really, really expensive and or clunky at the same time, needing a capture card or a camera to physically see what's on the screen. Now the basic running theme for this video is budget. I wanna do this on a budget and I want it to work well. Not quite sure how we're gonna do it yet though. Now, last week, Jed and I took a trip to our local hardware store to brainstorm and get some ideas. We actually ended up leaving with a tub of paint and some wood, and we came back and built a false wall to add some character to the end of this room. See if she comes off in one foul swoop. That's such a shame. Let's kickstart this project looking at the TV we're going to mimic. Sticking to our high-end cost-effective theme, this is the Panasonic MZ800. This is more mid to budget friendly, but still ticks all of those boxes. One of them, hopefully you can see on screen now with those inky blacks. This is, yes, an OLED panel at sub 1000 pounds for a 55 inch, and that is pretty unheard of. And we'll talk more about the panel once it's installed a little bit later. Let's get to work. So you're probably thinking, Alex, ah, oh, what is this big piece of painted wood you've got in your hand? And this is something that we knocked up last week. Not 100% sure if this is gonna be the final product, but we put a paint of coat over this that actually matches. Paint of coat, yeah. Coat of paint. <laughs> a coat of paint on this. Um, but we don't know if this is gonna be the finished product. We may put some AccuPanel on here, I'm not sure yet. But basically we've just reinforced this with some three by two and then put this in the middle so this can hopefully hold the weight of the TV, which isn't actually that heavy, which is nice. But first, LEDs and a custom WLED controller that we need to configure. So the LED effects behind this TV are gonna look nuts. Look at that. That is literally the perfect size LED strip that we needed. I don't believe it, that never happens. <laughs> That's unreal. Not yet. Very happy, very happy with that. We're running the Android effect now on the WLEDs. That looks awesome. Time to get this thing on the wall. Okay, so on my phone, I have the IP address of the WLED controller. It's all installed. I'm actually super buzzed about how clean this WLED install is. I've got control of the lights wirelessly from my phone, and I can also go ahead and do loads of cool effects. As you can see, this is gonna look so much better once it's on the wall, though. That's sick. So there is our bracket installed on the back of the TV. It's nice to see that obviously Panasonic are including the wall bracket mounts, but like normal with Panasonic TVs, they include a really hefty mount, and this thing is really, really heavy. So if you are gonna put this thing on a tabletop, you'll be absolutely sound, but for us, we're gonna stick it on the wall. I think it's gonna look sick. So guys, this is pretty crazy. I am so thrilled that we are here and we've done this journey together. If you take a look at some of these photos that, well, I was given when I was buying this house, you can see exactly what this room looked like to start with. And now, here we are. You can see that behind the TV, my LED effect, which is mirroring what's on the TV, that's working perfectly. And we'll talk about how I've done that so cheaply in a second. 
But first I want to talk a little bit about the tech that's making all this come together. And let's start with that awesome budget friendly panel from Panasonic. This thing is the MZ800 and it comes in 42, 48, 55 and 65 inch variants. And it was a perfect choice for this project considering how budget friendly it is considering all the features that you get with it. Much like the LED system that we've installed around it. This 55 inch behind me currently has 600 pounds off and it's currently under 1000 pounds sat at 999. So what does that pretty penny get you? Some of the standouts for me is the fact that this is an OLED TV. And if you can jump up from an LED to an OLED panel, you will notice a massive difference in pretty much everything. Not just the fact that the blacks are inky black, but the contrast will pop too. It's also got the latest HDMI standard, which is 2.1, and that comes with some great features like ALLM, or Auto Low Latency Mode. It can detect when you connect something like a games console and put the TV into its correct settings automatically. As well as eARC support for connecting things like soundbars and receivers like we've done here with our tower speakers. But regardless of that, the inbuilt speakers aren't an afterthought here. They've actually built a subwoofer into the back of this panel too. Sounds ace. It's also got the 4K Color Engine Pro, which in a nutshell, if you feed this TV SDR content, which let's face it, most content still is, it will enhance that image to make it pop like it's HDR content, and this really does work. The last thing I like about it is it's got Android TV, my favorite OS on a TV. There's very minimal advertising on here. There's no massive banner ads across it, and you've got access to the Google Play library, which is awesome for basically any apps you want. And you've got the Google Google Assistant button baked into the remote so you can basically quickly launch apps and find the shows you want without having to use an awful on-screen keyboard. I'll put all the links to the MZ800 in the description so you can check the latest offers on the panel. Now let's talk about how we've done this awesome light display around the TV. Now you guys must have seen our previous videos where we've talked about WLED, which is where you use an ESP board to control a set of lights. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the kits to have this effect with LEDs around the TV that mirror what's on the TV, it's expensive. Whereas here, all we're doing is utilizing a fairly inexpensive WLED setup at around 60 pounds and a cool piece of software that can be installed on Windows, Mac, or even on a Raspberry Pi, and it's called Hyper HDR. Now it is quite intimidating when you first load this piece of software up, but it basically runs on a device and then you can control it via a web page. All of the WLED controllers on your network have their own IP address, so it's important to set a static IP address so you know which controller you're controlling. You can then enter this IP address into the Hyper HDR software and it will connect to the LED strip. The next thing to do is to choose an input source. Now, if this was gonna be a more permanent setup, you'd buy a really inexpensive USB capture card so the software knows what's actually on the screen. No need for any bulky cameras here. Or if you're using a computer, the software can simply just capture the screen. The next thing to do is to input how many individual LED pixels you have around your display. I have 150. And then it's a case of just playing with the alignment until it all lines up. So if you guys have enjoyed, a light rating would be awesome. Please send us some pictures of your Hyper HDR and WLED installs if you manage to pull this up at home. And as always, massive thanks to Panasonic for sending out the panel for this project. It's really fit in nicely and we could not be happier with how this looks. My name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.